on Marky Bilson tries to do sports now, heard on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio most of the time. So our tower is down, so when that happens, you got two options. One, hey, we do this on Facebook Live, all right? And number two is that you are going to be able to hear us on jetbroadcasting.live. That's where you can hear the schedule all the time. Now, Tri-City Sports Now is archived. I've slugged all the previous shows. And so you can go and, you know, see what was on the day before. Or, you know, you do a search for whatever and you see me talk about why I think David Bell is a madman and ought to be fired, the Cincinnati Reds manager. Of course, they took two or three from Pittsburgh. But when you're going on the field after you've been ejected from the game to get into a bench clearing brawl, I don't think a suspension of a day, certainly, and not a week. And hopefully, since I can't imagine that he'd be protected by the players' union, he's a manager, uh, you know, some real retribution can come out. I don't necessarily think that Bell is doing that great of a job to begin with due to the fact that the Reds have some of the best pitching in baseball and they're in fourth place, and they're not in the race. In a not-so-competitive division, in a division that they were as close as three-and-a-half to at the All-Star break. You tell me, folks. So, by the way, speaking of the Cincinnati Reds, did you see where newest Red, Trevor Bauer, actually didn't show up in Cincinnati yesterday? No, he went to the old ball game in Cleveland to see his old team play as a fan. I don't know if he was comped or not, but I mean, no, he sat among the fans and all this. Bauer marches to the beat of his own drummer, and I like the rhythm of that drum. I know he's aloof, but he's pretty talented, and it's because of his own work ethic, which works for him. Training methods, etc., etc. So, I think the Reds, they didn't turn around and trade him before the deadline. And we'll talk a little bit about the trade deadlines, and then Tom Shanahan joins me at 1.30 to talk about his book, Ray of Light, and the integration of college football. Anyway, I better keep his card right here so I don't lose it. But ridiculous, But uh, regardless, maybe it's ridiculous, but it's regardless, uh, got to give some credit there to Bauer. I mean, that's just a nice way to say goodbye, if you will. And, you know, Bauer always, you know, one thing, he wore a t-shirt the other day, he was selling, I uh, said the other day, he was, you know, as I said, Bauer marched to his own drummer, but I like the rhythm of that drum. Let me just reiterate that, okay? So, say what you will. Now, I was going to talk about ETSU and their Hall of Fame class, and here it goes. The two guys that you probably, guys now a gender neutral term, that you probably haven't heard of that much who are in this class are Michelle Gregg, who in the mid-90s was a member of the women's track and field team, uh, freshman, SOCON freshman of the year in 95, for instance, and, is ET and uh, also won ETSU's only outdoor Southern Conference title. So that is not, you know... A competitive track, so I could read you all the accolades, but uh, she is the ETSU record holder in the 800 meters. And if you're thinking about what is a championship 800 meters time, try 2 minutes, 5.18 se 5 seconds. So 2 minutes, 5.18 seconds. So there you go. She also is the SOCON champion in her freshman year in the, one, in the 1,500 meter. So, you know, a pretty good distance runner uh, for the track, if you will, track and field. Michelle Gregg making the Hall of Fame. David Holtzclaw is a football player who played halfback at ETSU back in the Ohio Valley Conference days. ETSU was in the Ohio Valley Conference from, I believe it was, what, 1957 or so? To 19, I want to say, 7 through 76? So he said, Mini Dome was basically built so they get in the Southern Conference. Uh, late, uh, 79, I think, might have been the first year of the SOCON. I could be wrong on that, but, you know, late 70s. So it was about 20-year run in the OVC. Uh, he was in All-America. In 64 was former halfback David Holtzclaw, playing for the Buccaneers from 1962 to 65, and in 62, he led ETSU in rushing, it was kind of a modest number, 419 yards, 
But that was a year of ETSU's first Ohio Valley Conference Championship. They tied, much like last year. They tied. The, the overall record wasn't all that impressive at 4-2 and two for a conference record, I suppose. I mean, it's not bad, 4-2, and two, but, you know, you start thinking conference champion, you start thinking undefeated or maybe one loss. But, yeah, ETSU won it last year with a couple of losses in conference, now that I think about it. And that was the same way it was in 62. 69, they were undefeated. But anyhow, David Holtzclaw was the leading rusher on that 62 team. Uh, ranks 10th in, in program history in career rushing yards with 1,610. Now, in these days, i got to tell you, John Robert Bell, and I think, uh, really did believe in that old-fashioned uh, punt-the-ball-for-field-position strategy. It's a little-known fact that the 69 Grantland Rice Bowl champion Bucks actually set the school record for most punts in a season. He quick-kicked a lot, and a, even told me on this very radio station 23 years ago, you know, we'd rather you have it deep in your own territory than, you know, we then uh, we, that's what we want. That's a, we want to kick it deep so that you have it inside your own 10. Interesting. But it worked in 69, and it probably did uh, cut back some of the rushing yards. Holtzclaw was the football team captain in 65. Caleb Moore played baseball at ETSU from 2002 to 2005, and he was an All-American from the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association back in 2004. His 455 batting average is the fourth highest mark in history of the Southern Conference. He was drafted by the Minnesota Twins, and in 2004, he was the national leader in batting average and in doubles per game. Well, he also led the SOCON that year, 31 doubles that year is the uh, point, and that 455 average led the Southern Conference. Obviously, if it led the nation, it led the Southern Conference. 455, not bad. Yes, I remember Crash Davis saying that his old friend who now ran a pool hall, who hit 376 one year in Louisville, that's a career. Hitting 455 in Johnson City, Cardinal Park, for ETSU, that's a Hall of Famer. His name is Caleb Moore. Calvin Talford, do I really need to give you any introduction for Calvin Talford? Do I really need that? I mean, Calvin Talford, he played in the glory days. You know, there was Mr., there was Greg Dennis, who was one of the five 1,000-point scorers, netting more than 1,800 points in his career. And he made the all-SOCON team three times, did Calvin Talford, including all-freshman team in 1988 and 89. That was the first NCAA tournament appearance the Buccaneers made since... 1968, and only their second overall. So, he never knew a year in which he did not go to the NCAAs. He also, in 92, won the college basketball slam dunk uh, competition. Okay, that's an exhibition, but still. Uh, 1,800 yards, never missing the NCAAs. Calvin Talford is one of those special all-time ETSU athletes and the only question is, what took him so long to induct him? You might say the same thing about Brandon Walker. Buccaneers do not go to the playoffs in 1996 without him, although they had a wonderful year. Uh, 96 SoCon Freshman of the Year, and he really came in. I told you, very prestigious high school talent that he played in at Forest Park down in Georgia. His quarterback was Todd Wells, who became the most prolific quarterback in ETSU history. And before Wells was the quarterback, it was Heinz Ward. You may remember, he, Ward actually played a few games of quarterback at Georgia before he was drafted by the Steelers and caught a thousand balls for him. Anyway, Walker is the ETSU all-time leading rusher with more than 4,000 yards. Consider that the 10th leading rusher, uh, Holtzclaw, with 1,600 yards. And uh, Walker, 5 shy of 4,100, is the ETSU all-time leading rusher. He also scored more touchdowns than any other player in the history of the Buccaneers with 43. And he also, I, did, I knew he played indoor football down in Knoxville, but he 
had a cup of coffee with the Montreal Alouettes. That gives him something in common with Johnny Majors now, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, so, I mean, just, you know, arguably the greatest running back in the history of ETSU. I mean, some might say Earl Farrell because he played in the pros, for instance. But it's hard to go against Walker if you just look at what they did at ETSU. So that's the Hall of Fame class. That's who they are. Michelle Gregg, women's track and field. David Holtzclaw from the 60s. Football halfback, Caleb Moore, great hitter on the baseball team. Calvin Talford needs no introduction from the glory days of ETSU basketball. And Brandon Walker, the all-time leading rusher in ETSU history on the football team. That is the Hall of Fame class for ETSU in 2019. For the Happy Box Meal, featuring plentiful appetizers and rice around your choice of 20 mouth-watering Chinese dishes. Or try their Japanese fare, sushi, sashimi, and the grill. I had my birthday dinner at Asian House and was most satisfied. Find the great menu and deals at GoAsianHouse.com. Use Tom for catering. You'll be most satisfied, too. Asian House, nestled in the shops on West Market, on the way to Jonesboro. Mention 1420 WEMB Sports Radio and get 10% off. Drop the kids off at school, hurry to the meeting, run afternoon errands, return to school, and then back home. Your days are way too busy to have to worry about your tires. So look to Bridgestone and Firestone for tires that can help keep you on the go. With innovative Bridgestone or durable, dependable Firestone tires on your car, truck, SUV, or minivan, you'll get through your day with confidence. And then, maybe even enjoy a little me time. Bridgestone and Firestone tires. Available at Garland Tire, 1212 North Main, in Irwin. Your Bridgestone, Firestone dealer. This week on The Revolution with Jim and Trav, we're taking to the water in pursuit of freshwater action. Listen as our panel of angling pros talks tips for bucketless fishing trips, warm weather fishing tactics, and more. Joining us is Gary Klein of 